The most challenging part of being a new investor, a novice investor could be finding a good quality company to invest into. There are investors out there that show them day trading, option trading, making thousands of dollars every single day. And then they look at you and say, if you don't have the guts, if you don't have the guts, invest into index funds. Well, investing into index funds actually is a smart idea. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to pick and how to find good ETFs. I'm going to show you how to build an ETF portfolio. If you don't know how to find good quality stocks, uh, an ETF is an exchange traded fund. These are stocks that have different companies, multiple companies inside of their portfolio, and you can let them do their investing for you. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to build your own ETF portfolio. But before we dive into it, this video is brought to you by Moomoo. Moo. Sign up, click on the link down in the description, deposit $100 and you can receive up to 15 free stocks valued up to $2,000. With those 15 free stocks, you could keep them inside the platform and decide to use it. Or you can sell those 15 free stocks and withdraw all of your money. Guys, it's literally free money. Also I left a link in the description to Webull. Sign up, deposit just one penny and you can receive up to 13 free stocks valued up to $13,000. Once again, free stocks. You could use the platform or you could sell it. It's free money, guys. Both of those links are going to be down in the description. But enough talking. Let's go ahead and dive straight into this video. So if you guys have not been successful at day trading, option trading, or finding winning stocks, one Buffett, um, who's well known for picking winning stocks over his career, he shared a, a very useful tip for us. One Buffett said in his view, for most people, it would be most beneficial to own the S&P 500 index fund. ETFs are a type of exchange traded product that offer investors a way to pool their money in a fund that makes investments in stocks, bonds, or other assets that provide a potential return. But there are many ETFs out there. Just by the end of 2021 in the US market, there was more than 2,000 different ETFs to choose from. The United States ETFs cover pretty much every asset that's available in the world, including stocks, bonds, and other commodities that's available throughout the world. If you are bullish on the US market, right now we had a, a, a pretty significant pullback, but if you think the United States economy and the market is gonna be doing better than it is today over the next five, 10, 15, 25 years, then a few of the ETFs that you can look into is investing to the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. The S&P 500 consists of the top 500 blue chip companies in the United States. The top three S&P 500 ETFs right now is SPY, IVV, and VOO. Those rank first, second, and fourth amongst all the ETFs in the US market. These ETFs seeks to replicate the S&P 500 index, with the top 10 holdings being Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Tesla, and etc. Those company performance is also closely correlated with the underlying index, exhibiting a 21% growth in 2021. The second one is the NASDAQ 100 ETF. The NASDAQ 100 includes 100 largest non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ stock market, mainly covering the technology sector. One of the famous established ETFs that ranks in this index is QQQ. QQQ is the fifth largest ETF in the US stock market. QQQ has many of the same companies that SPY have in theirs, but QQQ is more tech heavy inside of their ETF portfolio. So you see a lot of technology stocks inside of the QQQ ETF. So if you think that technology is gonna perform better than majority of the other top 500 companies in America, then QQQ might be the ETF for you. Now, those are just a broad net that cast over these companies. But if you're looking for a specific ETFs, let's break it down even further. Let's look for some energy ETFs. The energy sector has been one of the hottest sectors over the last two years. With the energy price such as oil and gas prices boosted by inflation and economic recovery, energy related stocks led the way in 2021. Large ETFs in this sector includes XLE, VDE, and XOP. All of them are offering exposure to oil, gas, energy equipment, and service companies. All of these ETFs will turn more than 50% in 2021. The next sector we could look at is the real estate ETFs. Against the backdrop of high inflation, investors also turn to anti-inflation sectors such as real estate. The three real estate ETFs that you guys could look at could be VNQ, SCHH, and IRY. 
all of which has returned more than 30% in 2021. And as you guys have probably heard of the chip shortage and you want to get your hands in with that, you can invest into semiconductor ETFs. In the technology sector, semiconductors led the way. With the global chip shortage in 2021, stocks in the semiconductor industry has generally risen sharply. Popular semiconductor ETFs will be SOXX and SMH. <laughs> now nah, it's not shaking, it's not shaking my head. It's a uh, ticket symbol SMH. Both gaining over 40% in 2021, almost doubling QQQ. Now, just because you see ETF inside of your brokers like Webu, Mumu, or Robinhood, that, that, that does not mean that you need to invest into these because they are inverse ETFs and then they have leverage ETF. For inverse ETFs like SH or SPND uh, are inverse ETFs of um, ticker symbol SPY. SPY tracks the S&P 500. So every time SPY goes up 1%, SH goes down 1%. So that means if SPY is pulling back and the stock market is pulling back, you're going to look on your app and see that, hey, SH is shooting up because it's the inverse of the S&P 500. So when you see an ETF that is the inverse of the company, it lets you think that uh, unless you're trading and you want to uh, get in on this pullback, then that is something that you could do. But if you're a long-term investor saying, hey, I'm going to hold on to this for the next 10, 20, 30 years, unless you think that the economy is going to be doing worse uh, 30 years from now than it is today, then that is not a long-term investment. That is a quick swing while the market is pulling back during a while we're entering probably a recession. Now, there are also leverage ETFs, double ETFs, triple leverage ETFs to where, let's say, the QQQ goes up 1%. A, e a leverage ETF like TQQQ will go up 3%. Those are mainly used for day traders, swing traders that um, have, that pays attention to the stock market every single day. So you have to be careful when you're purchasing these ETFs and not buying just because they did good that day or that week. You have to make sure that these are inverse ETFs. Do your own research before you purchase um, any random ETF that you see inside of your broker. All right, so here are a couple of tips that you can use to choose your ETFs. First one is cost, not the cost of the ETF, but how much does it cost the people that are running the ETF? How much do they charge you every single year just from buying their stock? That is called the expense, or you can look at the expense ratio. On many apps, many brokerages, they all, they show you the expense ratio of these ETFs. You want to find some that are, are typically has a low expense ratio to where it really does not eat into your profit. The second one is size count. You don't want to invest into a small ETF. Typically, small ETFs charge a higher expense ratio compared to larger ETFs that has the money and infrastructure to where they could charge you at lower ETFs. You could probably make more money investing to smaller ETFs that eventually blow up into the future, but smaller ETFs are more likely to close. So make sure that you're not investing to any small um, ETFs if you're not willing to take that risk. Three, dividends. Guys, these ETFs do pay out dividends. You want to look for an ETF that has a pretty decent dividend payout. Some ETFs pay out every single month or every single quarter. That means you receive a dividend payment to your account every three months directly into your brokerage account. And then you can reinvest that back into the dividends or you can use that out or you could pull out your dividend payments and pay a couple of bills around the house. So I typically do look for ETFs that does have a decent dividend yield. Not all of them are going to have decent dividend yields, but some of them might. But you do want to avoid dividends that have a super high dividend yield to where they're not able to grow their own company because they're paying out most of their profits back to their investors. So make sure that you're looking for a company that has a decent dividend yield. And the last one for right now is avoid long-term bonds. Now is a good time to avoid bonds of a long-term, let's say 10 years or more, because inflation might eat away at your returns and interest rates are expected to rise from the historic lows. If long-term bond holders try to sell before maturity, the market might punish them because new bonds issued could pay higher rates and to reflect new higher prevailing interest rates. So just look for those four things. I would probably look for a nice, decent sized ETF. I would look for an ETF that pays dividends and one that's not a bun right now. So two that I am investing to right now, you could look at SPY, VRO, or QQQ. Those usually cover um, majority of the companies in the United States. You could look to add an energy sector one to yours, dealing with electricity or your gas. You could add a utility ETF to your portfolio. 
You can also add a high dividend paying ETF to your portfolio. One that I invest into that I've been talking about for a while is SPHD or QYLD. Both of those are high monthly paying dividend ETFs. But there we go, guys. Those are tips on how you can build your ETF portfolio. If you're not a day trader, option trader, swing trader, if you just want to buy a certain number of ETFs every single week, every single month, set it and forget it, which is pretty it's kind of smart it's kind of a smart thing to do is to just ride the flow of the market um these are some tips and ways that you could build your etf portfolio i listed some of the ones that i actually invest into let me know down in the comment section any other ETFs that you guys are investing into that have been performing fairly well if you guys want to know what stocks i'm buying and when i'm buying them i'm gonna leave a link down in the pin comment section to my discord over there i post every single time i buy and sell the stocks I post my option trades my day trades my technical analysis and we also have pro day traders in there that post their day trades every single day so if you guys are interested in being part of a community that want to be financially free just like you that's why you're watching this video then go ahead and check out that link down in the comment section but yeah before we go guys make sure that you guys hit the thumbs up button hit the subscribe button because it helps out this channel more than you can even imagine other than that i'm zeke bringing you the dream green show and i'm out peace